okay now we're in the step six we are going to create VLANs and assign IPs in VLANs for both distribution layer switches and we'll also configure trunk ports for the downlinks only that means we are going to configure trunk ports here for the downlinks and then the ether channel but nothing for the uplinks and the VLANs that we have used in this lab are VLAN 10 for IT 20 HR 30 accounting 40 cells and VLAN 50 for servers okay let's do that bring the console for the distribution switches okay now we're in the distribution switch one and uh, these ports are going to be trunk it's one slash one one slash two one slash three and two slash zero but let's create the VLAN first as you can see all VLANs has been created we can say show VLAN if you notice here 10 20 30 40 50 okay now we'll do the same in the distribution switch two okay it's good now we'll simply assign the IPs for individual VLANs so for VLAN 10 we have 10.10.10.1 .10 .10 VLAN 20 20 20 21 and VLAN 30 we have 30 30 31 VLAN 40 we have 40 40 41 for VLAN 50 we have 50 50 51 and they all are slash 24 mask okay let's do that now if you notice we have VLAN 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. If you notice, all VLANs has IPs now, but they all are down. So all VLANs will be down unless we assign them into individual interfaces. And then those interfaces has to be physically up as well. So for now, the VLAN will be down. We'll do the same in the distribution switch too. If you notice, the VLANs are also down here. Okay, now we are going to do the VLAN trunking for the downlinks including the ether channel so with the range command we have to select all the necessary interfaces so I have it 1 slash 1 1 slash 2 1 slash 3 2 slash 0 1 slash 0 and I guess let me see here and 0 slash 3 so that is port channel 1 because this is a ether channel then we have to do the dot 1q encapsulation we have to say switch port mode trunk then we have to mention which VLANs are allowed 10 20 30 40 and 50 then no shut and we can verify that so we'll copy that this configuration needs to be done in both distribution switches so we'll copy that we can actually copy from here and we'll do that in the distribution switch one first now with the command show interface trunk we can see which port are in trunk mode it one slash one one slash two one slash three and two slash zero and these are the allowed VLANs 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Now we'll do the same in distribution switch 2. I should have the similar output. It 1 slash 1, 1 slash 2, 1 slash 3, 2 slash 0, and port 1. This is the channel 1. And these are the allowed VLANs. Now we'll go to step 7, which is creating both access and trunk ports in all the access layer switches and assign those VLANs in their access switches okay this is our first access switch access switch 1 we have only VLAN 10 and 20 there but first we need to trunk them we need to select these two interfaces and allow the two VLANs 10 and 20 that's what we did interface range is 0 slash 0 and 1 slash 2 which is this two and then encapsulated with dot 1q and then switch for mode trunk and allowed VLAN 10 and 20 no shut now the 0 slash 1 is for VLAN 10 and 1 slash 1 is for VLAN 20 that's what we did interface 8 0 slash 1 mode access access VLAN 10 and 1 slash 1 is for VLAN 20 okay now we're in the access switch 2 and we have VLAN 30 and VLAN 40 here cells and accounting but first we need to make this uplinks trunk 8 0 slash 0 and 0 slash 3 we made it trunk with the dot 1q encapsulation and by the trunking we allowed VLAN 30 and 40 and in 0 slash 1 we have VLAN 40 and in 0 slash 2 we have VLAN 30 that's what we did 0 slash 1 access VLAN 40 0 slash 2 switch for mode access access VLAN 30 okay now in access switch 3 we have vlan 20 and vlan 30 so in 1 slash 0 we have 20 and in 0 slash 2 we have vlan 30 and 0 slash 0 and 0 slash 3 needs to be trunked and allowed vlan 20 and 30 let's see we had 0 slash 0 and 0 slash 3 we have encapsulated with dot 1q and then it's allowed 20 and 30 that's what we have here and then in 1 slash 0 we have vlan 20 which is here 
villain 20 and in 0 slash 2 we have villain 30 okay that's what we exactly did and lastly we have access switch 4 we have 0 slash 0 and 0 slash 3 we encapsulated with dot 1q we allowed villain 10 and 50 we have it and servers there which is 10 and 50 and then in 8 0 slash 1 we have villain 10 here you go and then in 0 slash 2 we have servers villain 50 and then we can verify with show interface eth1 slash 0 switch port and then we also have show interface trunk show interface switch port etc etc if we want to remove every configuration and make it default as it was we can say default interface eth and then we can call the interface now let's copy and paste first we'll go to the access switch 1 Now if you notice show interface eth1 slash 1 switch port if you see operational mode static access administrative mode static access negotiation of trunking is off and then in eth1 slash 1 we have vlan 20 here so it's good well let's copy and paste for every switches and then we can verify at the end all together Okay, we have finished copying and pasting so let's go to the switch 2 because we have already verified the switch 1 so let's go to switch 2 access switch 3 and now lastly access switch 4 everything looks okay as of now so we can save it okay we have finished the step 7 now we'll go to the step 8 and in step 8 it says configure vtp server in both distribution switch 1 and distribution switch 2 and vtp clients for all the access switches it's very easy so these two distribution switch will be our vtp server and these access switches will be the vtp clients we know that by default all switches runs in the vtp server mode and then this will be our dhcp server it will send the vlan information to the distribution switches and from the distribution switches the access switches and from the access switches the end user will have the ips so these are the commands for our vtp server we are going to run the vtp version 2 and then we have to say vtp mode server and we have to define a domain name our domain name is ccnp you can name whatever you want and i also gave the password as ccnp and then we can verify that for our access switches we just have to say vtp mode client here is server here is client and then it's the same domain and same password then we can verify that by saying show vdp status okay with no further ado let's do that so this is for our distribution switches both distribution switch 1 and switch 2 we have already saved that if you noticed here i said right and then here as well okay it's done now we'll go to the access switches but let me copy that first We'll paste this in all of the four access switches. Access switch 1, 2, 3 and 4. We can say show BDP status. Now if you see, it says client. This is our domain name. Obviously the password is not going to be visible. Good. So access switches are good. Now we'll verify that in the distribution switches. See this is server. 
So after step eight, everything is fine. I'll see you in my next step.